بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم our first sum is sum n from 0 to infinity 1 over the hyperbolic sign of 2 to the power n this is e to the power 2 to the n minus e to the power minus 2 to the n divided by 2 we can write the sum as 2 times summation n from 0 to infinity the reciprocal of this difference from this bracket take e to the power 2 to the n as a common factor then we have 1 minus e to the power minus 2 to the n e to the minus 2 to the n when we take the reciprocal this exponential appears here with a minus sign these two guys can be combined as e to the minus 2 times 2 to the n which is e to the minus 2 to the n plus 1 this is less than 1 in magnitude 1 over 1 minus x when the magnitude of x is strictly less than 1 is summation g from 0 to infinity x to the g we get summation g from 0 to infinity e to the power minus g times 2 to the n plus 1 we have this outside exponential they can be combined as e to the minus 2 to the power n multiplied by 2g plus 1. g is a non-negative integer, n is a non-negative integer. Any positive integer can be uniquely written as the product of an odd positive integer, 2g plus 1, and a power of 2. The power n is 0, 1, 2, and so on. In other words, this double sum sweeps through all positive integer values. We can replace the double sum by a single sum over k from 1 to infinity e to the minus k. Every positive integer k here in this single sum corresponds to a certain g n there. This is a convergent geometric series equal to e to the minus 1 over 1 minus e to the minus 1. This is 1 over e minus 1. Our sum of interest is 2 divided by e minus 1. The second sum is n from 1 to infinity. We have n times the square of the trigamma function evaluated at n minus 1 over n. The trigamma function is the derivative of the digamma function, which is the logarithmic derivative of the gamma function. This is the digamma function. If differentiated once with respect to z, we get the trigamma function. Specifically, epsi 1 of z is summation g from 0 to infinity, 1 over g plus z all squared. If z is equal to the positive integer n, then we have summation g from 0 to infinity, 1 over g plus n all squared. If we replace g by g minus n, the index starts at n, the summand is 1 over g squared. So this is epsi 1 of n or trigamma of n. Let's investigate the difference between trigamma of n and 1 over n. Trigamma of n is this summation here. 1 over n can be written as summation over integer g greater than or equal to n of 1 over g times g plus 1. This is 1 over g minus 1 over g plus 1. This is a telescopic sum that gives 1 over n. We write it in this way so that we can combine the two sums. We have 1 over g squared minus 1 over g, g plus 1. This is g squared, g plus 1 in the denominator. Upstairs, we get g plus 1 minus g. That's 1. Note that g is greater than or equal to n. 1 over g is less than or equal to 1 over n. 1 over g squared is upper bounded by 1 over ng. We have 1 over n. Then the telescopic sum equal to 1 over n. This upper bound is 1 over n squared. Note that g plus 1 is greater than g. 1 over g plus 1 is less than 1 over g. 1 over g times g plus 1 is less than 1 over g squared. If we sum this g greater than or equal to n, we get epsilon 1 of n. And if we sum this, we get 1 over n. This means that epsilon 1 of n minus 1 over n is non-negative. And from this line, it is less than or equal to 1 over n squared. We have these two inequalities. Multiply all sides by n, we get that 0 is less than or equal to n trigamma of n minus 1. This is less than or equal to 1 over n. We have 0 here. And as n tends to infinity, this tends to 0. Limit as n tends to infinity of n trigamma of n minus 1 is 0. Then the limit as n tends to infinity of n trigamma of n is equal to 1. To evaluate our sum here, we need the sum over positive integer n of trigamma of n divided by n. Trigamma of n is summation m greater than or equal to n, 1 over m squared. Here is the 1 over n. We have a double sum. The summand is real valued and non-negative. So by Tonelli, we can carry out the order in any way of our choice. The sum can be rewritten as a sum over positive integer m and then positive integer n taking values from 1 to m. Summation n from 1 to m of 1 over n can be written as summation over positive integer n of 1 over n minus 1 over n plus m. We can write down the summand in this way. 1 over n plus 1 over m divided by n plus m squared. This is mn, n plus m. The product is 1 over mn 
n plus m. If we combine these two terms, we get n, n plus m downstairs. Upstairs, we get m. m over m squared is 1 over m. Note that both indices are positive integers. If we take this 1 over n, we have 1 over n times 1 over n plus m squared. And if we take the other one, we have the exact same sum. We can write down this sum as double this one here, summation over positive integer n of tri gamma of n over n is equal to 2 times summation over positive integer n summation over positive integer m 1 over n times n plus m squared. If we replace m by m minus 1, now m is greater than or equal to n plus 1. We still have 1 over n. 1 over n plus m squared becomes the square of 1 over n plus m minus n. That's the square of m. I can rewrite this sum starting from n, but we need to subtract 1 over n cubed. This double sum is exactly the left-hand side, and the single sum of 1 over n cubed after multiplying by 2 is minus 2 zeta of 3. From this side and that side, we get that the sum over positive integer n of tri gamma of n over n is double zeta of 3. Define omega of k as summation n from 1 to k, n. Then we have this sum, m from n to k, 1 over m squared squared. If h of k is the kth harmonic number, then omega k minus h k is equal to summation n from 1 to k, n. Then we have the square of this sum, minus 1 over n. As k tends to infinity, this sum becomes the sum of interest, which is summation over positive integer n of n times the square of epsilon 1 of n minus 1 over n. So we are interested in this omega of k, or to be more specific, our interest is in the difference between omega k minus the kth harmonic number as k tends to infinity. Let's rewrite this small n as n times n plus 1 over 2 minus n times n minus 1 over 2. Split the sum into two sums, and the second sum is written using the summation index j. Note that the summand has the term j minus 1. So this is 0 when j is equal to 1. We can rewrite this sum as summation j from 2 to k. Do the substitution j equal to n plus 1. When j is equal to 2, n is equal to 1. When j is equal to k, n is equal to k minus 1. The term j times j minus 1 becomes n times n plus 1. This j here becomes n plus 1. Now, in the two sums, we have n times n plus 1 over 2, here and there. From here, we can isolate the term corresponding to small n equal to big k. Then we can combine the sums. We will have the sum n from 1 to k minus 1, 1 half times n times n plus 1. Then we have the difference between these two squares. The difference between the squares is the difference between these two sums. The difference is the term that we get from here when small m is equal to n. The difference is 1 over n squared. Then we have the sum, and the sum can be written as double this sum. Because this sum starts from n plus 1, we need to subtract 1 over n squared. n times n plus 1 over n squared over 2. This can be written as 1 over 2n plus 1 half. In this summation here, if small n is allowed to take the value big K, then we get K, K plus 1 over 2, 1 over K squared. From the bracket, small n is equal to K. We have just one term in this sum. Small m is equal to K, so we get 2 over K squared. And when n is big K, we get minus 1 over K squared. This is 1 over K squared. Together with this term, we get K plus 1 over 2 times K cubed, which is this outside term. We can bring the outside term into the sum and make it from 1 to big K. We have here minus 1 over n squared. When it's multiplied by this bracket, we get two sums, minus half summation n from 1 to k, 1 over n squared. This tends to minus 1 half zeta of 2 as k tends to infinity. We also get minus 1 half summation n from 1 to big k, 1 over n cubed. And this converges to minus 1 half zeta of 3 as k tends to infinity. When this bracket is multiplied by 2, we get 1 over n plus 1 multiplied by this summation, m from n to k, 1 over m squared. We can split into two sums. Note that as k tends to infinity, this summation converges to two summation over positive integer n of tri gamma of n divided by n, which we have obtained as 2 times zeta of 3. When we use 1, we get this summation n from 1 to k, m from n to k of 1 over m squared. This double sum can be written as summation m from 1 to k, n from 1 to m. We can carry out this summation over n. We get the number of terms in the sum, which is m. This summation is m from 1 to k, 1 over m. 
This is the harmonic number HK. We can take this harmonic number to the other side. We are interested in the difference. Omega of K minus H of K as K tends to infinity. The first term tends to this sum. The second term tends to minus one half times zeta of two. The third term tends to minus one half zeta of three. Let's reinvestigate omega of k, but we do it in a different way. Here is omega of k. Now I write down this summation that is squared as the difference between the sum over m greater than or equal to n and the sum m greater than or equal to k plus one. The difference between these two sums give us this summation here, where the index is from small n to big k. This summation is tri gamma of n. This summation is tri gamma of k plus one. Expand the square. When this term is squared, we get epsilon of one of k plus one squared, multiplied by the sum n from one to k of n. That's the kth triangular number, one half times k times k plus one. When this term is squared, we get it here. Let's subtract minus one over n, and then add summation n from one to k, one over n, which is the kth harmonic number. When we square, we also get minus two epsilon one of k plus one, and then this summation n from 1 to k, n epsilon 1 of n. We can move the kth harmonic number to the other side. And here is another expression for omega of k minus h of k. When k tends to infinity, this part here becomes the sum of interest. Let's see how we can deal with the remaining terms. Here is omega of k, and then these two expressions for the difference between omega of k and the kth harmonic number. On the first page, we have obtained that the sum over positive integer n of epsilon 1 of n over n is 2 times zeta of 3. We have also obtained that the limit as n tends to infinity of n epsilon 1 of n is 1. So the limit as n tends to infinity of the square of n epsilon 1 of n is equal to 1. We also have the result that if we sum n terms from this sequence, summation g from 1 to n of g epsilon 1 of g, the sum when divided by n tends to 1 as n tends to infinity. This mean tends to the same limit, which is one. If we look here, as k tends to infinity, this tends to one half, this tends to one, this tends to one, this tends to two, and this tends to one. So from here, we get one half minus two. That's minus three over two. And this becomes the sum of interest. This is equal to two times zeta of three minus one half zeta of two minus one half zeta of three. The sum of interest is 3 over 2 times zeta of 3 minus y squared over 12 plus 3 over 2.